Andrew Weath is an artist who spent most of his time in this farmhouse located in Maine. Most of his subjects that are depicted in his portraits are from his homeland. One day, he looked outside his window and saw Christina dragging herself around while she was picking berries near his family graves, and this became the inspiration behind this painting. Christina, who was paralyzed from the waist down, suffered from a degenerative muscular disorder that was un undiagnosed, but later called polio. We sketched Christina for this picture painted in the summer of 1948, but he asked his wife Betsy to pose. So in fact, what you're seeing is the legs of Christina and the head and torso of his wife, Betsy. The pink in the dress that is worn by Christina was compared by the artist to a faded, crumpled lobster shell that he probably found on the beach. She seems to be lost in the landscape, even if she's close to her house and in a familiar area. The artist implemented different techniques, which made it seem like as she was getting close to the house, the house was actually receding. Christina is, in fact, a trespasser on her own land, not because anyone ha has forbidden her to go there, but because her own physical disability puts it out of bounds. It actually seems like Christina's world is a prison. Even if Christina is in the picture, the artist puts additional technique techniques, which makes it look like you're seeing the landscape through her point of view. What was so revolutionary about this artwork is that while most of the other artists during this time were doing abstract expressionalism and pop art, Weath was still doing realism as showed by this painting. If we look closely, we can see that this 20-year-old Christina appears to be a figure of an old woman. If you look at her hair, there's bits of white strands of, her, of hair that would not be on an adolescent. Her shivered arms have a dreadful, pitiful look. If you look at her hands, they appear to be clawing on the grass, which creates a feeling of sadness, because it depicts a sense of frustration and helplessness. Weath hid the face of Christina because the emotions that would be displayed on her face are displayed in the painting. In the painting, there is a broad area between the figure and the farmhouse, and only by treating the broad area as an abstract mass could we concentrate our attention on the dynamic tension that is sensed between the girl and the distant house. The medium that was used for this piece was tempera. Tempera allows a great control for the painting. It allows the artist to build up one layer over the other, while letting the colors underneath show through. Through this medium, Wheat was able to put incredible detail in the individual hairs and blades of the grass by having them painstakingly highlighted. The composition is asymmetrically balanced. Weath used a low angle in this scene and painted the grass the way he did to make it look like an endless sea and to create the effect of the large distance between Christina and the farmhouse. Weath makes it look like he made the grass with great fidelity, but in fact, he uses an illusion created by the abstract use of paint, line, color, and brush strokes. Self-Portrait by Chuck Close Close grew up in a time of abstract expressionism and minimalism. Abstract expressionism was a movement that implied that the physical act of painting was as important as the result itself and used abstraction to convey emotional or expressive content. Minimalism was a movement that attempted to discover the essence of art by reducing the elements of a work to the basics of shape, surface, and materials. As a child, Close was diagnosed with dyslexia and prosopagnosia, which is a cognitive disorder of face perception where the ability to recognize familiar faces, including one's own face, is impaired. Close said, I often felt overwhelmed by the whole, and I found that if I break things down into small bite-sized pieces, this big overwhelming problem becomes much more solvable. This is one reason why he was so drawn to the grid technique. The grid technique was a method used to blow up or enlarge art. This process required him to take a photograph of his client, divide that photo into a grid, and then transfer that grid onto a larger grid on the desired medium in which for this specific piece was onto canvas. This technique allowed him to comfortably focus on each individual part without being overwhelmed by the whole. In his late 40s, Close suffered an injury which left him paralyzed from the neck down and dependent on a wheelchair. His motivation to paint never thwarted and hours of physical therapy helped him regain mobility of his hands and arms. 
He used a splint so that he could hold the brush and a mechanized easel to raise, lower, and rotate his canvas to a suitable position for him to paint. Close experimented with the effect of the grid, sometimes applying it horizontally, vertically, and diagonally, which is why every time he redid the piece, each was different and unique from the others. He found the grid to be an important compositional device to structure his image and not merely a tool for scaling up his material. When he starts to paint a portrait, he applies a background color to each individual section of the grid. The colors that he chooses have a similar tonal value to their corresponding section on the grid. He then starts to fill each section with four or five freely painted outlines of different colored forms. He draws these from a vocabulary of simple shapes that include squares, triangles, right angles, donuts, and hot dogs. Each small section becomes an abstract color study whose hues mix optically to create a visual chord. Years of experience have taught him how this chord will read from a distance and how it will combine with adjacent sections to form the tones and colors of the head. In his artworks after his injury, his use of the grid has been more explicit, which can be seen in self-portrait. He controls the viewer's interactions with the image in a more measured way and increased his focus on his vocabulary of marks and colors, which lend more emphasis to an abstract reading of the image and heightens the viewer's awareness of the grid as a structural element. What makes his work even more special to other artists' grid work is that he only engages with his work up close. He is always within arm length of the piece and never backs away to view the work from a distance and see the work as a whole. I personally fell in love with this art piece because to me it conveys the message that detail isn't everything and that things as simple as squares, rectangles, circles, triangles, and a bit of color can make something so utterly amazing. I also love how the artist's mental disabilities and physical drawbacks didn't keep him from doing what he loves and were actually key to his beautiful work.